In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is not man, that he should lie, or a son of man, that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? We find these verses in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, how many of us can confidently say, I have not lied? I sit in confessions. There are many who come to confess their sins. And many say, Father, this is what I am battling with. I always lie. I feel like lying, you know. And I want to get rid of this stigmata, the stain that I have of lying. People don't trust me because I easily lie. I want to be a trustworthy person. There are few who come and say, Father, I never lie. I don't feel like lying. I have never lied. I don't know how much of truth is there in it, but yes, there are few who live a very committed life, who do not absolutely lie. In all circumstances, they speak the truth. And these are the ones whom people trust. These are the ones whom people want to be with. And today, as we are here to dwell on this verse from the book of Numbers, chapter 23, 19, we are here to dwell on the trustworthiness of God and how God keeps up to his word, on how God does not lie, on how the people who profess their faith in God remain to keep it till date because God speaks the truth and God keeps to his word. And having said this, God's justice prevails. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I don't remember when was the first time that I have lied. But I know the consequences of lying have destroyed the trust that I would love to ha uh, to, to, uh, for people to have in me. Mainly, I remember as a child, I found lying as something being very normal because I got away from all the bad that I was doing with a simple lie. And there were instances where I was caught, one of which was very terrible, after which I decided that I will not lie. I will keep up to the image that people would want me to be in, the image of truthfulness. And as a priest, I'm bound to be truthful to my word because I choose to make Jesus the Lord and master of my life, Jesus who speaks the truth and is committed to his word. Not that I'm 100% successful, but yes, I'm moving towards that perfection of Christ. And I try my level best not to lie. And there are many among us here who at one time feel that they also should be trusted, that they be known as wonderful people, as truthful people. The whole instance from the book of Numbers speaks of how God is just. And these words are words of Balaam, a prophet who is called to destroy the people of Israel. The king hires Balaam, who is a prophet, and he is asked to curse on the people of Israel. And Balaam knowing the ability of God, confesses that it's not possible because the God of Israel is a God who speaks the truth. 
He does not lie. He is not man. Because man can easily lie. God keeps up to his word. And then Balaam, who is supposed to be against the people of Israel and against God, confesses that God cannot lie. God speaks the truth. God keeps up to his word. And if this is a God you and me belong to, each one of us should remind ourselves that when we choose to follow God, when we choose to follow Jesus, we also choose to be truthful. We also choose to be trustworthy. And then keeping God as our model in life, we need to move ahead in life. God chooses that his only begotten son becomes man. The word becomes flesh. Why? It's because he comes before you and me to set an example of truthfulness, of faithfulness, of trustworthiness. Each one of us is called to be trustworthy. And therefore, this is where we make a place for ourselves here on earth. People, even if we are gone, remember us as truthful people. People would love to be around us when we are living because we are truthful people. It may hurt some people when we speak certain truths, but yes, they will value you and me. That the one who is speaking is speaking the truth and he never lies. It is not difficult for us to become like Jesus. Each one of us should attempt to be truthful to God's word, truthful to the commitment that the Lord places on us as his disciples, truthful to our brothers and sisters who look up to us as role models in life, truthful projecting a true image of Christian disciples to this world. I wish all of you a wonderful season of Lent, that the Lord may help each one of us to reflect on our own lives and make us trustworthy, make us truthful, make us faithful. Amen. Beginning of the Second Vatican Council, Pope John XXIII led the Church in praying for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Renew your wonders in this our day, as by a new Pentecost. A few years later, seemingly as a result of John XXIII's prayer for renewal, a significant event took place that would forever change the lives of millions of Catholics and the Church itself. On a weekend retreat, these Catholic students prayed that, in some way, they too might discover a renewed sense of Pentecost in their lives. Those who prayed for the experience that came to be known as baptism in the Spirit had experiences similar to all the others. A new depth of prayer, love for the Scriptures, a devotion to the Eucharist, a heart for evangelization, a call to conversion, and a life of holiness. On Pentecost Sunday in 1975, Cardinal Sunans and 10,000 individuals who had this charismatic experience met with Pope Paul VI. We are pleased to see signs of this renewal. Long life for the charismatics. Amen! <laughs> It is my firm hope that the Holy Spirit will find more and more fruitful welcome in the hearts of believers so that the culture of Pentecost, so necessary in our time, can spread. We are gathered here, believers from 120 countries in the world, to celebrate the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit in the Church that took the initiative 50 years ago and gave rise to an institution? No. An organization? No. To a current of grace.
In February 1972, Catholic charismatic renewal began at Mumbai. With those who have experienced the baptism in the spirit spontaneously during private prayer. Today, Catholic charismatic renewal is present in every diocese and state of India. Today, statistically, it is the largest and fastest growing movement in the Catholic Church and is found in all continents and cultures. Priests, religious sisters, and lay persons make up the estimated 120 million who have been influenced by the renewal movement.